hello guys so you are welcome again to this tutorial series and this is tutorial space with Ola um, soon enough I'm going to be changing the channel name <laughs> I don't know um, how soon though but very soon anyway so if you are new on this channel and then you like the content that you have seen so far do not be scared to click on the subscribe button um, because that enables you to get notifications when I make new uploads and also because subscription is free. <laughs> Alright, anyways, so we are going to be doing something pretty interesting today which is we are going to be creating our valve sub assembly and then without further ado we go right into it our rotary engine is activated and then we go into assembly workspace and for all the guys that are always watching and also for the ladies if you have questions you have comments you have difficulties when you are trying to replicate the things that you have seen do not hesitate to contact me like drop a comment Oops. all right so we go right into it <laughs> i click on place and almost all the parts that we'll be using today are beginning with the letter v except for one which is the hold down valve spring and then i bring the guy in as a lone ranger <laughs> and click on the escape button so i go back and then bring in the rest of the guys so we have the valve, the valve spring, the valve cup. Click on open and zoom out a little bit. And drop these guys here. Escape button. Okay. So, um, alright, so I'll just change this stuff really quick to make it, you know, yeah, so we can see the edges and all. Alright, so haven't done this, we would. Do the first thing we always do which is to make one of the parts to be grounded which is immovable and which will serve as a reference for the rest of the parts so for now i will do this i would make um the xy plane visible all right click my mouse is acting up so i'll right click on that <laughs> and then go over to assemble Pre rotate I select on this dude and I no not that this dude yep and I rotate him this way just to make it a little bit I don't know maybe easier <laughs> I suspect that is, it's also possible to do this actually I don't suspect I know it's possible to do this without doing pre rotates okay so what we have done now is that I have place this dude on this face which means it's always going to be facing like the parallel direction to this face and i can click on cancel and then i'll right click on him and select grounded all right so the guy is grounded now yeah <laughs> and we start placing the boring constraints <laughs> I select on this guy um so you notice that the array is showing which signifies that the cylindrical constraint or the axis of this part has been selected and then i would come in here to select on this cylindrical surface and the axis also is selected and take note that this is definitely the wrong orientation um i mean this guy is facing upwards and then is not supposed to be that way so we need him to be in the inverted direction and remember these arrows which i've spoken about opposed and then as you can see the arrows are opposite each other so what we need is for this face to be here and then that means we want them to be aligned all right having done that you can see that guy is here even though he's kind of hiding all right so um, we have that apply and then we want to bring this dude 
um, I need him also to be cylindrically constrained to that part and then we have to be careful here because as you can see there is a groove here um let me see no so we see that there's a groove here and this groove should be facing downwards because that's where the spring is going to be sitting in so what we do again is like i said you know previously we selected on this aligned to make this in the proper orientation but this time around this is wrong so select on our post and then we have the groove faced here great haven't done that i click on apply and we could say okay before we do that let's bring this dude and bring this dude and make them flush together so they are flushed and we say apply and we can cancel all right so we would like to bring this spring now to be within this um parts so this guy the spring is supposed to rest in between the hold the hold down valve spring i don't know why i named it that but that's this guy <laughs> all right so um we need cylindrical constraint, assemble and constrain and then I'm here. So we need the arrow to be sh showing, which is supposed to be the cylindrical axis. And as you can see, there is none visible, which is quite an issue, naturally speaking. That's supposed to be an issue. But then, like I said previously, that with the assembly workflow that we are going to be encountering slight challenges and then definitely we'll be solving them. So this is really simple to solve. And then all we need to do is to make that axis who is hiding, make the guy visible. And then the only thing we need to do is to go over to valve spring and then we edit that part. The editing is not going to be something serious. I mean, definitely it's not going to affect your processor. <laughs> All right. So this is looking weird now, um, but maybe we'll leave it that way. Yeah. So what we we'll do is I'll go over here in the process of creating this coil. If you remember from the tutorial, um, we had to use an axis of rotation. And so we'll make this visible. We'll make this sketch that was used in creating the part visible so you notice that this is the um, profile for the spring and this is the axis by which the profile um, revolves around or spirals around all right so we've made this guy visible and then we can return back to the assembly workspace and what we will do here now is that we click on constraint we want the axis of this dude to be constrained to this axis and you see voila that's very simple all right so i can bring this guy down and also let me see um technically speaking technically speaking yeah technically speaking this guy is always supposed to rest on this due to gravitational force so we want this face <laughs> we want our face to be constrained to this face which is going to be let's say well the face is constrained to that face and then we say apply and then we can also say that this face should be constrained to hmm. we need to be careful to select the right face because here now i have lots of um fillets and so we need to be very 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 careful so i have this here and i would say flush okay 
um so this is flush but as you notice that this guy there's a space here so for now i would say apply and cancel and then what i'm going to do is i would measure the space between these two guys because this face is supposed to be in here so i measure the distance between these two faces um i don't know if this is really really obvious what i'm doing anyway so the distance here is 2.5 millimeters which means um though this guy is here um if this guy is supposed to be opened you should go about 2.5 millimeters before it touches this um valve and it also means that when this guy goes down okay this is touching this face so technically speaking and based on what i'm observing this guy ought to be like um longer to fit in here automatically because um what happens is that the rocker arm pushes this valve down with the spring and so the valve becomes open and then when the rocker arm releases from the valve then the spring pushes it back up and makes it closed and since it's already closed here while the spring is not in contact means that we have to increase this the rotation or let's say yeah you have to increase the size of the spring by 2.5 okay so we will do that now um weird a little bit so i'll say escape and then i would go back to the valve spring and say edit but we'll be able to do this very easy um because of the kind of um, workflow used in creating this so i would say edit this sketch and this is 8.9 so we will be adding 2.5 to this dude and so what i'll do is um let's say uh okay 8.9 equals to 8.9 plus 2.5 enter all right so we have this and i'll say finish sketch and the magic has been done seems like voodoo <laughs> um let's see yeah so it's good and then return back to the assembly and you notice and now it is there so these are challenges that you could see and then when this is pressed down then this dude opens up so remember that i said that um we placed the flush constraint here um but then we're going to come back to that so what i'll do is i'll go back to the flush and then i click on edit so um technically speaking i would just add an offset something to it and say that the minimum distance uh of this is zero and let's say the maximum distance is 4.5 um okay and wait a minute let me see cross check that i'm doing the right thing um so i'll just name this um valve offsets what am i doing <laughs> valve offsets and okay right use offset as resting position no okay so we have that and then that means that this guy can go in a distance of 4.5 millimeters however in this um, assembly process we are not going to be doing an animation now but at the end of the tutorials we would find out <laughs> all right so um let's see something it should be interesting so i would remove this guy the mate there and see what goes on here um 
okay so it's going in the opposite direction which is definitely not what we want so i would say maximum what about if i said this guy is minus okay so it cannot be minus so the maximum would be zero and the minimum will be minus 4.5 all right so we say okay and then yeah so you notice that this guy can go down stuff like that and then so with all we've done we only have the con the cylindrical constraints on the valve spring so we have to give this guy another constraint and that would be the constraint between this point and this point all right okay and then we have this also we are going to be introducing a part from our content library like we have already been introduced to and that's simply because um something has to hold down the valve with this um valve hold down spring <laughs> the name is weird so what we'll do is um i'll go to place from content center and like i said previously the parts are not things that oh this dude knows them in his mind nope i do not so i've done research as you can see it's already open but um for you if you're trying to navigate it on your software so you go to shaft parts when you find shaft parts you go to cell clips you could select it here and then external and then when you have external opened then you search for d i n six seven nine nine I repeat D I N six seven nine nine and select on OK. So we have this here, and then the first thing to do is to select the diameter of the surface where it's going to be attached to. So this face, and then having done that, it has um, realigned the size of this circle. And then we also have to select the face where it's going to be resting on and that's going to be this bottom face here so i select on this face and select on apply okay 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 um let's see 2.3.5 wow okay um so we we'll say okay um but then we notice i select on escape we notice there's an interference here with these two parts and you could do that by inspecting but naturally already visibly we can see that and you say okay you notice yes there is an interference there which we do not want so what do we do we have to edit another part but as I said previously, these things are really simple. So, um, I would select on this face to know the diameter of the circle itself. And the diameter is 6.3 millimeters. Alright. So we know what that one is. And definitely this is smaller. Right. We know that it's smaller than 6.3. So what we'll do is we go over to that part and click on edit. Remember, we want to change it to 6.3. So we go into Direct Edit 2, which is the wizard tool that Autodesk has given to us. <laughs> and then I need to change the size of a particular face selected. And then this face is the face I want to adjust. This time around, I don't need to click on the arrow because I cannot remember what diameter this is so what i'll do is i'll just come over here and select a new diameter which is 6.3 and press ok 
now you notice that it has been adjusted and then definitely there should not be an interference anymore so i would return yep and inspect so we have this guy sorry you can see we have this guy and we have this guy and okay there are no interferences detected and we are fine all right so what do we do i will make this guy invisible i would bring these dudes here i would go back to assembly sorry we're done with the assembly process um this dimensions are still visible and so i would come over here um edit this valve spring we don't need the dimensions anymore so we could always make them invisible and doing that is not going to um undo the constraints already done on the dimensions all right so we have all of these and then just to make it look a little bit nice to the eyes <laughs> and ground plane okay so we are done and um i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please place your comments in the comment section because i really love reading your comments and also if after my speech at the beginning you are not convinced enough <laughs> to subscribe to this channel please do now like um you know just try click on the subscribe button it's free to do so and um let's say we're done so we have to say definitely assemble files assembly files and I select an valve sub assembly okay save yep so all these are showing and this is visible here because i made some um modifications to this part so do i want to save all these parts also yes to all and okay all right so this is done and i will catch you guys in the next tutorial and as always keep watching this space Thank you.